Hey, what's up guys? My name is You Can't Have This Username, and today I'm back with another quad feed video for you guys. And in this one, I've got a quad feed with every single tank in Battlefield 1. Like always, this idea comes from Merc Music's Quad Feed with Every Gun in Call of Duty series, so check out the link in the description if you want to see some of his stuff. I originally was going to do a quad feed with every gun video, but at this point in Battlefield 1's life cycle, there are just way too many guns for that to be practical at all. So instead, I'm doing a quad feed with every variant of every plane and tank in the game. This video has been like two or three months in the making, so if you like this sort of thing, make sure you let me know down in the comments. If you don't want to watch these clips with the commentary over them, skip to the timestamp on screen now. Starting off with the first tank, we've got the Mark V Landship, and the first variant of that tank is the Mortar Tank. Although the Mortar is somewhat slow, this tank still is pretty good against both vehicles and infantry, and for this first feed, I was able to time my Mortar just right to blow up this tank on Empire's Edge. I did end up using this tank a little more, and in this clip, I saw a ton of infantry heading towards this objective, and I got a bunch of them clustered together. Just after that, I got a triple in the exact same spot, so this landship, while slow, is definitely pretty powerful. Next up is the Tank Hunter variant, which has an anti-tank rifle in the driver's seat. This one wasn't too hard to get done at all, I think it only took me like a couple days. In this clip, I came up on another tank in close range and was able to outshoot it pretty easily for the quad feed. Finally, we've got the Squad Support Landship variant, which has this like explosive machine gun thing as the primary weapon. This one took me a while to get. It's difficult taking out more than one enemy at a time with the machine gun, so I targeted vehicles instead and just so happened to get the last shot in on this enemy behemoth for the quad feed. The next tank on our list is the A7V, and the first variant of that tank is the Heavy Assault Tank. On this one, I snuck behind the enemy on Suez and tried to shoot through the first guy into the group of enemies in the back, but that didn't really work. The shell just blew up on the first guy and didn't travel through. Luckily, I was able to get a second shot off to kill the last three enemies before there were any other kills on the kill feed. Next up is the Heavy Breakthrough Tank, which has shells designed for taking out enemy vehicles. The primary shell is honestly pretty bad at killing infantry unless you hit them directly, so I targeted vehicles for this one. In this first clip, I got my last shot off to destroy the enemy vehicle just before I died, but none of the icons displayed in the kill feed for some reason. I don't really know why it did that. Afterlife kills usually aren't an issue like that. I did go back, and the very next day, I was able to get this heavy bomber out of the air at the start of the game for a quad feed that actually displayed the icon. Last up is the heavy flamethrower tank on the map Amiens. Unfortunately, I didn't actually end up using the flamethrower for this one since it's honestly not very good, but I was able to get this five man with the main gun, which I'm pretty happy with. For the next tank, we've got the FT-17, and first up is the light close support tank variant, which comes with a cannon and a light machine gun. The light tank is definitely one of my favorites. After a big streak, I ended up getting a quad feed down the hallway because the enemies just kept trying to peek the door while I was sitting there waiting for him. Next up is the light flanker tank with a satisfying feed on Empire's Edge. This tank is actually really easy to use and didn't take me long to get at all, so if you want to get feeds with the light tank, try using this variant and go into places that enemies wouldn't expect you to be, like in hallways or at entrances to bunkers and places like that. Finally, we've got the howitzer variant, and this clip is kind of funny because I was aiming for the assault truck in the distance, but an armored car drove past right as I shot and took the bullet for the truck, which basically just handed me the quad feed on accident. For our next tank, we've got the artillery truck, and first up is the standard artillery variant. This first feed on Suez was pretty cool because I ran over the first guy, used the cannon to take out the second and third guy, and then got the last guy with another roadkill, all in the span of like a second. In that same life, I also destroyed this heavy tank and got another quad feed that way. This is easily one of the best tanks in the game, so if you want a tank that's effective against both infantry and vehicles, definitely check this one out. The second variant of the artillery truck is the armored anti-aircraft truck. And while going through some old files, it turns out I actually already had two quad feeds from destroying enemy behemoths that I completely forgot about, so here they are. Finally, we've got the mortar truck variant and this feed on Amiens. This variant is easily one of the most overpowered tanks in the entire game. And I knew I could get something better than that, so I went back and actually got this 7-in-1 multi-kill. 
The actual quad feed wasn't on screen for very long, but it still is a pretty good multi-kill, I think. For our second to last tank, we've got the assault tank. What's cool about this variant is that you can actually release a carrier pigeon that calls artillery directly on your location, which is how I got this first feed. Like the mortar truck, I knew I could get something a little better because the tank is just so good, so I went back and got the six-man feed too. For the gas assault tank, I drove right up to this bunker on Monte Grappa, blew out the door, and started firing all the way down to the end for the five-man multi-kill. This spot is easily one of the best spots to get big kill streaks in tanks. But only the light tank and this one, I think, have main guns small enough to shoot through the door, so if you want to use this spot, you'll probably have to use one of those. Last up is the standoff assault tank, which is geared more for taking out vehicles. Although it was a different match, this clip is actually right outside the bunker of the last one. I knew there was a land ship down that hill somewhere, but I couldn't see it because of the smoke. I did see the light from an explosion through the smoke though, and when I shot at it, I actually destroyed the tank for a five-man feed. Our last tank is the Russian Putilov Garford. The first variant of this tank is the armored assault truck, and this one took me forever to get done for some reason. After a few weeks of only using this tank though, I got super lucky and was able to shoot this heavy bomber out of the sky for the quad feed. Weirdly enough, literally like a minute later, I shot into this bunker and got another quad feed, although the last icon didn't display for some reason. Next up is the anti-tank variant, which is extremely bad against infantry, but really good against vehicles, kind of like the heavy breakthrough tank. This one's probably my favorite feed of the whole video. I originally was going to go for the tank in this back alley, but once I saw the infantry standing off to the side, I went for them instead and got a five-man roadkill feed. I always love watching that feed. Also, just yesterday, while using this tank again for another video, I was able to shoot down this heavy bomber and got another quad feed with it. Our last variant is the Armored Reconnaissance Package. Originally, I was going to try to go behind this tank and lay down the anti-tank mines for the quad feed, but I missed horribly, so I just shot at it and it was actually low enough that it took only one shot to destroy. So, that's a quad feed with every variant of every tank in Battlefield 1. It definitely was a grind, but just like the planes, I think the clips really turned out pretty well. If you like these and want to see more of this kind of stuff, let me know down in the comment section. Also, if you just skipped here from the timestamp at the beginning of the video, the clips without the commentary will start in just a second. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys right now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.